No, I'm not going to sit here and argue and debate with someone because I understand that they're immature. I'm going to do what I need to do to defuse the situation. And then I'm going to go into the, the reality of leadership at that moment. And then I'm going to try to pull myself back. Sometimes we do get very, very angry. We get upset. We get, you know, sometimes out of control. But as entrepreneurs, how do we handle our client base when it comes to gossip? Greetings and welcome to Chronicles of a Nonprofit episode 86, where we discuss the highs and the lows in business development and entrepreneurship and how to be your better being in your brand. Welcome. I'm Dr. Darina Shine, and you're listening to the podcast at Dr. Darina Shine TV here on YouTube. This is a pre record from our podcast, our private podcast that we have. Um, present it to YouTube. And now we're going to go right back into the class. We have a class of seven today. So we're going to get deep on gossip. Here we go. So Kennedy, all right. If you feel that what people have to say about you is so vitally important, imagine you being on stage and on this stage, you have a hundred people in the audience. You're getting ready to perform what you've been practicing all this month. Okay. Only to find that what they expect you to do is what you're going to do on this stage. So it made no sense for you to practice. It made no sense for you to go through all the skits and all of that because they're going to direct how you're going to behave on the stage. That's exactly what it looks like when we allow people to rent space in our head through, you know, how they treat us and we hold on to it and we don't let it go. Okay. Gossip is a severe process. Okay. And what it does is it layers the good that we do and it fuels it with weeds, with weeds, you know, So we don't want to do that. We don't want to do that. We want to empower ourselves. We wish to motivate ourselves in a productive and positive way. How are we going to become greater than the situation and circumstance? As a leader, how are we going to do that? We're going to rise above, right, Kennedy? That's how we're going to do it. Mm -hmm. Lauren, so when you, when, when you go through the process of the gossip, I understand that, yes, you want people to understand that this is how you feel about this person. Okay, especially as an entrepreneur, you're in the same groups of individuals, um, Maybe you go to conferences with the same individuals and this person is just always the one that's hogging the attention. You know, they know it all. They and, and, and so you and a co-worker begin to talk about, oh my God, here we go. Now we got to sit here for another extra hour because this person wants to go on and on and on about their careers and about what they do in their establishment. And it's prolonging the day. You guys thought it was going to be a quick conference, early get out and then go eat and then, you know, make it back to the work spot before it's time to close. But I get that. I've been in that situation before. I've been in many, many times. Okay. But what we don't understand is that we, everything in this society can be used as a tool and a learning experience to get us through from point A to point B. So what's wrong with listening to the story, especially if it's going to benefit us in the end? And I want you to understand that too. But here's the thing, Lauren, talking to Kennedy about what is being said about this individual, we have no idea if Kennedy's going to run back and tell this person, oh yeah, when so-and-so, when you were at that seminar, 
so-and-so said, da-da-da-da-da, and then now here comes the conflict. How about we just say, you know, I feel this way. I really feel that I wish I could be released early from this seminar so I can go and pick up my kids from school or do whatever a person may want to do in this situation. But gossiping about this person could bring about weeds over seeds that will eventually become abundant harvest. And we don't want to do that. We just don't want to do that in today's society. People are always dealing with the highs and lows of emotional crisis. And we never know when that person is at their wit's end. So we want to diffuse it as soon as possible. But gossip is not the way to do it. Gossip is not how we handle circumstances. Now, yes, Lloyd, yes, holding holding that process, holding that process in fueling and, and uh, realizing that we can turn that fuel to energy is what is going to help us weed out those weeds. So when the, when the abundance comes forward, you know, it'll be okay. You know, I keep running into the song, Joy and Pain, like sunshine and rain, right? Without a flower, a flower can grow without the sun and the rain. So we got to balance the equivalency of what it is we're ingesting. And gossip is more rain than necessary, which will do what? Spoil the foliage. It's going to, you know, um, flood it. Even no matter how rich the soil and the same with the sun without the rain gossip is similar to too much sunlight. Yeah. The sun is beautiful, but go out there on the beach in 110 degrees with no sunscreen on and you stay out there for about two hours, the sun beaming down on you, you're going to become bacon. Okay. So in this process, this is the same thing that gossip does. So I want you to really, really uh, uh, meditate, entrepreneurs, on how you're going to handle these certain circumstances in your life, in your career, because people will sometime bring these ideas to you just to see how you're going to support that idea, how you're going to get frustrated, because when people recognize how to push your buttons, that's when they begin to feel that they have more leverage. And remember, competitor leverage is, is, is real. So you always be at a certain plateau and a level with everyone. So that way you're already at that moment of I'm ready. But yet if you need to push it up a notch or two, you're already there. You're ready. And if you need to dumb it down a little bit, you're already ready. The stress is not as, as vital. Also, gossip. Let me tell you, I've been in a position where I have gossiped about things that really and truly happen. Yeah. Yes. They really and truly happen, Grace. And in this happening, I felt I had the opportunity and the ability to tell the next person, I was disrespected by this or that. Uh, this person, you know, public official, political entity, governmental official, uh, community activist, or whatever, they did this to me. And I share the story. It will not happen in 2024. That is dead. That is over. That is done. That is gone. There is nothing I can do to bring that back. So in my present moment, if I want to plant seeds of abundance, I'm going to stay as positive in my resourcefulness as I can. Yes, I will remember, I will forgive, but I will not forget. And that will be in the back burner of my uh, archive, just in case it tries to come up again. I could say, oh, I've been here, done that, but I will not be using the elements of what someone else has done to me five years ago and reflect it upon what I am doing today. Because again, that is planting the weeds of the seeds 
of possi possibility that is going to be covered by weeds. And I'm doing it myself. I am creating the weeds within the foliage of deep, dark, rich soil that is supposed to be growing in abundance. And it goes back to the mirror image of reality. Whatever you mirror and you look at in your reality as what it is, that's what it becomes in your world. So if you sit back and you say, this person has done that, or this person has done that, you're going to get more of those people doing just what you're saying. Kennedy, and that's why it's important. That's the validity behind why I'm teaching to, yes, you know, move forward. You don't even got to forgive. You don't even got to forget. Just move forward. Pull those weeds out. Practice it. Go out and plant you some flowers in the richness of spring and watch how many see, weeds you're going to have to pull out. Imagine that as being the gossip in which you would normally be a part of, but you're pulling the weeds out. So now the gossip is gone. This is between you and your higher power. And then you yourself can throw it away. Make it a ritual to do things like that to where you are in control. Because the minute that someone realizes that you're still talking about that, is the minute they know that you have not grown from that. And they're happy with that because as long as, you know, and think about it, leaders as entrepreneurs are not going to go back and tell other leaders they're still talking about that thing that happened four years ago or 10 years ago or 20 years ago. Mm. Especially narcissistic individuals who feel that they have control over the mindsets of someone else. That's even in relationships. So let's look at that, entrepreneurs. Let's look at the gossip of our past relationships and how, you know, you wish that you could, you know, get that, that rendezvous or that, you know, opportunity back again. But guess what? Truly, that time is done, dead, and past. It'll never be the exact same as it was prior to. So there's no need to even bring it up. And that's what I want you to understand about gossip. Now... Another thing is building your career off of how you even respond to your clients. Some hairdressers, and I've seen it, I've gone into the establishment, I'm sitting there, and you have the actual leader uh, in the building, which could be the owner or could be the a supervisor, talking about a client who was just recently there. What took place? What happened? Yes, I get that entrepreneurs as a way of just educating people on what's going on inside the facility. I get that. Especially if there is a circumstance that created uh, a, a eyesore or something. Okay, where the police had to be called or something happened. Okay, well, I sat back and I looked at this leader and I watched how this leader performed in her area of expertise. And I realized that she was very limiting. She was limiting to the seed she was planting. And it was as though she was trying to put the odds against the, the people and what you were there versus the person which she was talking about. And I had a feeling, I got a feeling in this situation that the supervisor did not like the individual and actually wanted to have her removed because of a circumstance, because of a situation. I always look at things as what could possibly become a legality, something that could be civilly sued or something that could be criminally sued. And as I look at her, at this supervisor saying what she's saying about this individual who works there, mind you, and these to these clients, I'm just looking at all kind of roadblocks. I'm, I'm seeing her planting all kind of weeds in her rich soil, and she's just talking away. There comes a time, entrepreneurs, we must be mindful, we must be careful 
of what can be used as leverage for our competitors. Because this person, based on what I heard, and just, you know, I don't have to repeat anything. I don't even have to repeat anything to tell this story. But the leverage of what the competitor could actually do to this individual could literally shut down the entire salon. They could shut it down because of the defamation of character that is being us consumed in the conversation with individuals who are just coming there to get their hair done. So these are things that I want you to be very mindful of. The professionalism of leadership is what I want you to focus primarily on today in this class because it's about realizing and rationalizing what the key points are when it comes down to understanding how to behave as a leader in an establishment in which you have your name on. So we're going to get into the seven points behind how to protect yourself from gossip, how to protect yourself from the sinister way that others can bring gossip as well as take gossip. Because a dog that brings a bone will carry a bone. So as I give you these concepts, they'll be submitted in your email as well. But I want you to really, really focus when I talk about these seven characteristics, these point of views. I, I want you to see which, how many of them relate to your personality. Now, being genuine as entrepreneurs is the key to this ethic and moral perspective that we're going in right now, okay? So it's not about you telling me, it's not about me judging you, it's not about me, you know, um, saying, oh, well, whatever. No, you don't even have to turn it back into me. But what I want you to do is in your journal, I want you to focus primarily on these seven point of views because, and, and how many of them you may fall into because then the follow-up is going to be based on how we're going to realize what we do as uh, concept number one through seven, and then how that concept is going to influence our growth in the next 30 days. So we're going to go back, and in 30 days, you're going to go back to today, which is 11 23 and then you're going to Look in your journal and see what you wrote. And in 30 days later, we're going to figure out, did we sustain um, successfully the pulling of the weeds out of our foliage, our rich, dark foliage? Thank God for melanation in this world today. Did we pull out the weeds that we planted in our own rich soil with the seeds of abundance that we're expecting in the mid or second, third, fourth quarter of 2024. Are we going to be successful in that? And that's the key that I want you to really pay attention to. Now, some of the individuals who are listening to this podcast, either on YouTube, Instagram, or on Facebook or um, TikTok, here's what I want you to do. You don't even need necessarily the seven steps only because um, this is for my private students. But if you were to consider what would be some of the traits that a gossiper would bring and a gossiper would take, what seven characteristics would you use and how does that connect to you? Because of course, if you can think of the seven things you know specifically just like my students will know when I give them the seven pointers, they're going to know that that's a part of me. That's a part of my character. You know, consistently, you know, judgment, consistent judgment, consistent flawlessness, perfection. Okay. These are some of the things that you could actually put out there and see if you can make it better for yourself 30 days from now. I did it and it was phenomenal how when you write things down and when you believe 
and put out your weaknesses on paper. You begin to see how you can grow from it. And before you know it, you're like, oh, I've excelled from this point because I used to be like this. And that's the goal, setting the standard for you to grow. So we're going to stop this video here. Um, I'm going to get my students. I'm go I'll be in a podcast. Uh, give me about 10 minutes. Let me finish up this podcast here from my YouTube community. And then I'll be right over and we're going to go over those seven concepts. Thank you. Yes. So entrepreneurs, the key to success is, is realizing that you have a choice in the matter. You play the biggest role in the highs and lows of what is established through your career. And basically you are building the brand of what type of leader you're becoming in your own establishment. I need you to know that. Give me one second. I need you to know that when others choose to judge you based on validity, things that they see you going through and experiencing and what type of person you are is the one that all of these onlookers are looking when no one else is looking. When no one else sees, that's when they, they check it. Now, you might have some clients or some individuals who just look at your weakness, the, the base weakness, um, and they recognize it and they don't know how to push those buttons. But then you have those who are really, really looking deeply. They're analyzing, dissecting, like they're in biology class, okay? So those are the ones that are going to be the gossipers because they're looking too deeply and in the lane so closely have you ever driven on the freeway and someone is driving so close to you and it's like all this space around you, it's fueling off of that energy that you bring. So give them nothing to talk about. 2024 is going to be an awesome time for those stepping out on basic leadership, basic relationship values, basic internal independent values for self, basic just the bare minimum, getting up, taking showers, eating breakfast at the table, not in the bed, eating lunch, um, you know, communicating with people socially and humanly and not as, you know, robots on a computer, but actually learning how to project through societal changes. That's the key. Thank you so much for being consistent. Thank you so much for being ready and being on time. You are the best you rocking the shoes that you're wearing today. And you should be very, very, very proud of yourself. Keep going, keep moving, keep being the best you can be. And we'll see you next time.